My name is Flavia. I'm a social anthropologist from Brazil. I was born in Rio, Rio de Janeiro. My father is from Paraíba, the northeast, and my mom is from Minas Gerais, in the center of Brazil. They met in Rio, and I was born there. I stayed there only two years. Then we moved to Minas Gerais. I was there till I was 20. In my 20, I went to Rio to do my PhD and master's. I did social science for my graduate studies, and then I did social anthropology and social anthropology again for my master's and PhD. I was always very shocked and very upset and very sad and, and angry as well with inequalities, social inequalities. I come from Brazil, we have very, rich, very few very rich people and we have a large population that uh, is very poor. It's so unfair, it's, it's unfair and it's not right to live in a world where people have too much and other people don't have anything. I remember this was really something I wanted to do something about and that really pushed my interests. So I went to social science, I think that has a connection why I chose social science. And now I'm studying a conditional cash transfer program called Programa Bolsa Família that give money to the poor families as far as they keep the children at school and keep them doing health checkups as well. So in a way I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing <laughs> when, I was, when, I, when I think about my past and I think when I was a child. I'm a mother of two young children, two Serena is six years old now and Olivia is three years old. They, uh, they take a lot of my time, that's true. I take care of them alone because I'm divorced. I have been married, but now I'm divorced. And the father lives abroad. And he comes only to visit. So day to day, uh, every day, tasks are with me, which is, which is not always, it's always, it's always a challenge to tell the truth. To become a mother was the, the, the most important thing that happened in my life. The, nothing could be harder. Nothing I have, have ever done before, and I thought I have done a lot before them, was very hard. Personally, it was very hard. I suffered with sleep deprivation. And I really understood why sleep deprivation was a torture, way of tor torturing people, because for, for at least one year I was not sleeping. I was not sleeping uh, more than two or one hour. So it was really hard. And together with my children came the divorce, so it was quite hard in that sense. And I had to take care of them alone. And, uh, I had to work, go back to work. And I didn't have my parents or my family because I live in the Northeast, I live in João Pessoa. So I, don't have a, I didn't have a, uh, this net of support. So I had to build that. And I think that is crucial, a net of support for, for women. It doesn't matter what social class we are talking about. If to have children, you have to have support. Women cannot have to take care of a child is not a women's whole, it's the whole of, a, of more people, more people have to get involved. Ideally, I don't know, our, in, in our societies we think the ideal is the father and the mother, a man and a, and a woman, but not, not necessarily. I think there are other ways to, to raise a happy child and to his, raise a happy generation. And for, for example, with the role of the grandparents and the grandmother and the grandfather, and that is something that made a huge difference in my life. When my parents were with me, they came to help me when I, when I was struggling more, when I was really struggling, when Olivia was very small, they came to live with me for a while. So it was really important. I don't think I would have survived without them. And then now I have, uh, I have paid help and they go to school, but in Brazil school is only four hours. They only go for four hours at school. 
I was supposed to work eight hours per day, but I became much more efficient. I use my time in a more smarter way. When I'm with them, I'm only with them. When I'm work, I'm only at work. So the impact, the impact of them it was tremendous in my life. They changed my life completely because they changed also the way I perceive my job, the way I, I put things in perspective, the way I value things, the way I, what I see as important. So, for example, I had children, oh, I have children, I had the students, yeah, they are my children as well. <laughs> they, I have students that were pregnant. We have to forget about the research. We have to think about the person now. You have to, to, to see the student beyond the student, right? You have to see the person. We produce a, a book. It's an initiative from the Women Working Group here in the GYA that comes as an answer to a gap that we saw that was the need to talk about motherhood. That's the title, Motherhood in Science, How Children Change Our Careers. So that was the call, that was the, what we asked them to write about. And what was interesting for me that came up was these two ideas. First, that in the long term, uh, we don't face a fall in productivity and that children, instead of being a barrier, in our case at least, children brought luck. And I think maybe we have a biased sample because we are all successful women in science. So we, most of us, didn't face the problem that the majority of working women face when they become mothers. And secondly, is the need of support. All the accounts that are successful, I'd say, are accounts where you had a network of support. There, especially with fathers, in the book we see that I'm the only, I think I'm the only one without a father. Where, where the children don't live with, with the father, but you have the role of grandmothers, grandfathers, people from the family, and also the role of maids and uh, nannies. That's wonderful when the country supports that with maternity leave. That's not that easy when you ha don't have a country that supports with maternity leave in, t in terms of how you're gonna pay for, for the daily costs. And it's wonderful as well when the institution where you are has a sensibility for that. It's growing the sensibility for this time off that needs to be taken, but it's not yet implemented in, in everywhere. All around the world is quite different, but it's, it's, we cannot say there is a developing and developed country differences, because United States, for example, is, they almost don't have a maternity leave, and you have the Nordic countries that have what we consider wonderful maternity leaves and paternity leaves as well. It's very important, we've seen in the book and in my life is, as well, I've seen the support of other women that has passed through similar situations. Sometimes we think we are super special in the sense that we're super unique our path. And in fact, not. When I, when I was going through a lot of struggle, a lot of struggle with my children, I couldn't talk with other people. I was too lonely. I thought it, I was going through things that were so strange and so awkward, so not nice. And that was only me. But now I see people like younger mothers saying things that they are going through that I went through. But I didn't dare telling at that time. I should have. But so talking to other mothers is a good way to, to go through and that would be my message to not to be alone. Believe in yourselves, although sometimes it's very hard to believe in yourself. You have sometimes we need to have you have to have a people around that supports you, that say, go ahead, you can do it, you're good, you need to have support. I think support is just crucial. And not to be too alone and to get 
to get help if needed as well. Help in all, in all senses of help, like help from friends, help from maid as well, because it's overwhelming to do everything. If you have to go to teach, if you have to submit articles, if you, if you have to submit applications for funds, if you have to correct papers from your students, if you have to cook, if you have to go to the supermarket, if you have to clean the house, if you have to bring children to school, take children from school, if you have to take them to, to, to doctors, you have to go to sports, you have to have a good diet. It's immense, the list of things I have to do and women have to do in my, my situation. I don't have much time to think about this, to tell you the truth, but I, I think I'm going to be in a different country in 10 years' time. I'm not sure. I hope I have I, my research becomes more feasible in the terms of more applicable. I hope my research reach more people and I is able to concretely to impact society. But I'm in the, in the moment where I'm still very connected to my children and I cannot take too much time from them. So I'm, I'm, I'm in the balance. But with them I see that with them I have more strength to do what I want to do. But at the same time I have less time. But it's growing up in my mind. So it's, when I have the time I will be able to do it. <laughs>